uh, first we need to talk about your inept, your ineptitude as a leader. Um, what or non-leader or I, I, I don't political know what it is you're doing political. <laughs> um, quote: Other members became upset when you invited <gasps> a socialist candidate. Um, who is this socialist? He's an 18-year-old young man okay. who is running for freeholder. What's his name? Patrick Noble. Is he still running for freeholder? Yes, he is. He cleared the primary? I believe he did. Uh, don't Actually, I don't know the answer to that, but I know he's still running. Uh, he's... I'm he's not, the only not socialist. sure. We'll have to, yeah, he's the he's only, the only socialist. socialist. Not, 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 not going to be too yeah. too much trouble to find him. Yeah. Right? Now, the reason okay. for inviting him, we don't. It, I mean, you're I not trying be, to turn your organization exactly. into a socialist. I think it would be uh, immature, for lack of a better word, to think that by bringing a socialist in here, it's going to be contagious and rub off, and we're going to turn into socialists. Um, I think mature people can have anyone come into this office and speak and be able to have a conversation and share ideas and disagree, which we did with 99. I mean, these, this young man actually does not like Obama. He, he dislikes and is unhappy with a lot of the things we're unhappy with, but his solutions are just not mm -hmm. ours. Everyone's, everyone was respectful to each other. Uh, he was a very respectful, uh, polite young man, but very misguided. He's 18. Right. If there was a chance by talking to him to perhaps make him see things differently, or see the light, or, God forbid, learn something from him, which I doubt that very much, because his, his, his views on things are very different than ours. Well, I would think, if I anything... I see nothing wrong with that at all. If anything, what you could learn from someone like that is you, you learn how young socialists think. Exactly. They, how, they, the how they got that way, how, you know, he's, and, he's and how we can find a cure for this. I mean, to ignore it? How could you just ignore, let's ignore that because we don't agree with them, so don't even have them in the doors. Un that's unbelievable to me. Invite I, them in. I want to hear what you have to say. Why do you think that way? I'd love to get, uh, Bob, your, your Please, thoughts I'm on getting, this. <laughs> I get very upset with that. Your perceptions about it. You know, what, what struck um, you about this? <clears throat> let, uh, let's go back a little bit. Um, uh, when Barbara and I first started talking about Patrick, um, and, and his situation. Um, we reviewed a couple of news articles on his positions. Um, he uh, was very much anti-authoritarian. <laughs> Strange for a socialist. socialist. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, Anti-Obama. Mm -hmm. um, he was concer his, con his concerns were for people and their circumstances. Mm -hmm. And he felt that through certain policies that uh, um, uh, were socialist that he could help benefit those people that he was concerned about. In other words, government can do can do this. Is that what he was saying? Yeah, in effect. Uh, okay, so it, it, it is peculiar that he was he was uh, um, so abhorrent of authoritarian government, and yet he was willing to place authoritarian government in full charge. And the great conundrum to of socialists this. and communists exactly. everywhere. But, but given his age, I'm wondering if we don't have some parent issues in there, too. Well, it was funny because we here. did not have, his parents did not mm -hmm. attend that meeting, mm -hmm. which, I, which I thought was peculiar. Um, and, and he, given the fact he said, he's on the campaign trail, you would mm -hmm. think. Yeah, yeah. But, and he was, a, he, he, was a, he was a very polite, nice, okay. well-mannered young man. You, you would think that his parents would be out there following him around to see sure. what he was doing. Um, our concern was that... Um, that we're, we're Tea Party people, we're really anti-socialist, mm -hmm. uh, almost totally. Um, so we, we were concerned about how he would be treated. Um, we wanted him to understand that um, we did not agree with his points of view. Uh, we loved his enthusiasm. A uh, young man wants to go out and, and help the people in his community, in his country, um, to do better or to get mm -hmm. better. Or, just improve their lives, which is great. Okay, and we want it. We want him to continue in that vein. Uh, one would hope that we could our 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 um, our exposure to one another would help us see a little bit about what it was that he was concerned with, and help him change his ways mm -hmm. in understanding that our intent is truly the same as his, 
and helping to improve everybody's lot in life by giving them the freedom to be able to do it and all of the other things that are necessary to succeed in this society. So um, we've had exchanges with him since then. Mm -hmm. And uh, Any although I think they're varied, I'm, I'm, I'm suspecting that, um, that some of his socialist attitudes are softening a little bit. Ah. Some of his friends are a little more um, mm -hmm. vehement in their socialist leanings. Right. But um, he he wasn't uh, he, he he wasn't uh, an idiot. He was uh, he, he had his Very concerns, fine. and he felt that uh, some of the ways that he was looking at were were valid ways to solve the problems, uh, which they clearly aren't. But. Sort of sounds like the shepherd who leaves ninety nine sheep to find the one who's caught in the brambles. Yeah, kind of. And maybe it'll have a happy mm -hmm. ending. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Maybe it'll turn out one day the was light will dawn and worth he'll... two hours of us yeah. sitting and listening to him and speaking with him? Right. Absolutely. But we Absolutely. like the idea of exchanging points of view. As, as abhorrent as some of those points of view are to us. Mm -hmm. um, as opposed to, say, to uh, getting together with one another and basically the choir singing to the choir exactly. and everybody singing back to each other from the same songbook. And it's another, the same. Another, it doesn't seem to be much of an expansion of benefit. But another good thing that came about from that is how uh, he saw the Tea Party. He had an impression of what the Tea Party is until he met us, and he said, "He he said, uh, you're not like you're not really like a Tea Party. I like you guys." And I said, "No, Patrick, we are a Tea Party. You just happen to see." what the news decides to show you, which is a crazy person with, uh, I don't know, screaming and carrying on, but they, those people are everywhere. And um, so you think this, this, altered, also for that, for this him, altered his perception, his perception of the Tea, of the tea Party. party. Yes. And that happens a lot. That happens a lot with people that we meet and find. I mean, we'll always go over to people. We went to clean the beach uh, this summer with uh, oh, Congressman Oh, that was with uh, Frank Pallone, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. And um, we spoke to a few people there, and, and it was the same thing. If They said, you know, you, you guys aren't what they uh, say you are. That's, I'm that's surprised you didn't get accused of being co-opted by Pallone. Pallone. <laughs> well, well, it's that's out next. now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, for all we know.